Hey guys, my next recommended book is Salt, Sugar, Fat by Michael Moss. I recently read uh, The Hungry Brain by Stefan Guillenet, uh, and that referenced salt, sugar, fat throughout, which reinforced my decision to recommend it to you guys. This book centres around the idea of the bliss point, a certain amount of salt, sugar or fat that scientists have found create hyperpalatable foods. A clear example would be the Pringle, aka once you pop you can't stop, and that's exactly what these scientists are trying to create. Foods that maximise your desire to overeat. Next time you're eating crisps, remember that a team of scientists have designed these not for your health, but to encourage you to eat as much of their product as possible and want to buy it again. You learn how food manufacturers face pressure to set aside the negative health impact they're having on their own customers and focus solely on increasing profits. Those companies with a conscience who try to offer healthier alternatives find themselves losing out to rival companies and that's something that's still happening to this day. Recent examples like LucasAid's energy drink and Ribena's reduced sugar recipe show you that doing the right thing is often very costly. Their motivation was actually to avoid the new sugar tax, but by compromising their recipe, they received a massive backlash from customers who deserted them for other brands. If there's one thing this book will do, it's open your eyes to what's going on behind the scenes in the manufacturing and advertising of processed foods and drinks. If you're someone who regularly eats junk food and you're trying to cut down, then I cannot recommend this book highly enough to help you understand the tactics that you're up against. First, as I mentioned before, there is a bliss point of sugar content that manufacturers have found maximises the desire to overeat. This point is higher in children than it is in adults, at around 35% sugar, and they've used this information to create products that are high in sugar to market to children. So if you think for one second, companies like Coke, Pepsi, Kellogg's are giving any consideration at all to the health and well-being of their customers, you're sadly mistaken. Talking of Kellogg's, point two was Kellogg's Frosties, originally called Sugar Frosted Flakes. This was back before nutritional labels and surveys found out that customers were concerned about the potential high sugar content of foods. So what did Kellogg's do? They rebranded. They took the name Sugar out, giving the impression that there was less sugar in it, and their Frosted Flakes still contained over 50% sugar. Nowadays, Kellogg's Frosties contain 37 grams of sugar per 100, slightly more than a supermarket chocolate cake. Finally, and this was at the time the book was written, if everyone in the US reduced their salt content by half a teaspoon a day, it would prevent 92,000 heart attacks, 59,000 strokes, and 81,000 deaths. That would save around $20 billion in healthcare and other costs. Pizza is a great example of a high salt food. I host uh, color-coded nutrition tables on my website, and if you scroll somewhere like Domino's, you'll see just how much salt there is in a small, medium or large pizza. Thanks for watching, guys. You can find notes on this and my other recommended books over at 9to5strength.com forward slash books. And if you wanted to look at the nutrition tables, that's 9to5strength.com forward slash food. Thanks.